Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're talking about a new discovery coming directly from NASA of what seems to be the first ever very accurate analysis of the surface of a neutron star also known as a pulsar. So let's find out what NASA discovered and welcome to What The Math. Now you might already know a lot about pulsars and neutron stars, but in case you don't, let's go through a very, very brief summary. So these are exceptionally uh, dense and extremely massive, but also somewhat small objects. Two of the most famous ones are right here. This is something that scientists back in the days won a Nobel Prize for. They're known as Taylor and Hulse. And here, if you were to zoom in and just to kind of see the actual size of this object, it's sort of equivalent to a typical asteroid. And as you can see, compared to our moon, it's pretty small. But the mass here is over one mass of the sun. So in other words, it's like taking our sun and turning it into this really small object. Now, one interesting feature of every single pulsar and neutron star is that they do have very interesting dilation effects, very similar to typical black holes because of the mass and density here. And um, because of these effects, you can sort of see that the light is bent um, very close to the actual neutron star. And that also means that, first of all, if you were to look at a neutron star, it would typically appear much larger than it really is. And at the same time, you would always be able to see an object on the opposite side of the neutron star. Like for example, right here, you'll notice that this part is actually on the opposite side, but because of the dilation effects, the light is bent, allowing you to see what's on the other side. This is kind of similar to why black holes look the way they look, or at least we believe they look like this. And here the um, light you're seeing on the bottom is actually the back of the black hole. It's the disk on the other side. But anyway, generally speaking, neutron stars are either what's known as pulsars or basically radio pulsars, radio neutron stars, where they emit a lot of radio waves, or some of them can be classified as X-ray pulsars, where they emit a lot of X-ray radiation. But for the most part, even the radio pulsars will still emit some X-ray radiation as well. And the reason they do so is because in most cases, and let's actually try to simulate this by using this large moon right next to our pulsar, um, when the matter falls into the neutron star, which we're going to try to simulate here, it essentially creates an accretion disk that we were able to create with the moon here, but at the same time it creates several, um, I guess you can call them spots, on the surface of the a neutron star or a pulsar. And although it's kind of difficult to see these spots in this particular simulation, we can see them much easier here from the simulation uh, that NASA used here. And these spots form as the matter from the accretion disk or from whatever star is nearby or from any kind of leftover material falls into the neutron star. But because neutron stars are so massive and also so dense and have such a strong gravity, when matter falls into them, it falls with ridiculously high velocities, up to about half the speed of light. And because of this really high speed collision, it generates a tremendous amount of energy and usually this energy is um, x-rays. So in other words, we're seeing these emissions of x-rays because of the matter that crashes into the neutron star. And as you can see in this particular simulation, we were able to create um, a very interesting binary pulsar system with a lot of matter that's now going to be generating a lot of energy that could easily be seen from really, really far away. Now, if you were to ever look at the definition of a neutron star or a pulsar, you would always find yourself discovering that they seem to have these two jets, as you can see here. And these two jets are um, essentially pointed in opposite directions. We obviously would call them northern and southern jet because it's somewhat similar to how a northern and southern uh, hemisphere of Earth work. And in some sense, you could even compare these X-ray spots that are generated on top of neutron stars to how our planet Earth generates its uh, aurora or northern and southern lights through the interaction with very highly charged matter coming from the sun itself. So in some way, the um, as you can see here, the aurora are formed by the interaction, uh, the magnetic interaction with our planet itself. And in some sense, this is how we believe the spots here form as well, which is why they should be on two opposite sides, the northern and the southern side. However, there was this one specific pulsar that uh, the scientists wanted to investigate using this beautiful device known as NICER. This is actually an X-ray 
well, I guess you can call it a telescope that looks at X-ray radiation and it's surprisingly located on the ISS in the International Space Station. And so when the scientists looked at the pulsar known as J0030, they've discovered something a little bit more unusual. The Earth view of this pulsar was not as we expected with two different poles. As a matter of fact, all of the X-ray radiation seemed to have been uh, sort of concentrated around the southern pole. And there wasn't just two different emissions, there were even possible possibly three emissions, and some of them were unusually shaped, even crescent shaped. Two different teams investigated the same pulsar, and both teams got a somewhat similar result. Okay, it was not exactly the same, but they all had these unusual emissions coming from the southern pole, and these emissions were very different from what we actually expected to see. In other words, this particular pulsar has a tremendously um, weird, unusual, and inexplicable magnetic field. The way that it's formed and the way that it's um, emitting these x-rays is not what we thought would be uh, possible for a neutron star. Which of course brings us to another unusual mystery that we just discovered by looking around the night skies. On top of this, we also were able to very accurately measure both the size and the mass of this pulsar, and both teams did a pretty good job at having a somewhat similar result, and what we've discovered is that this pulsar is around um, 26 kilometers across, and has a rough mass of about 1.34 masses of the sun. So in other words, if we were to look at a typical pulsar right here, it has a somewhat uh, higher mass of 1.8 masses of the sun, but its radius is no different from what we've discovered. In other words, what we theoretically believe their size and mass to be seems to be pretty accurate. Our theory has been more or less proven through the actual observations. But except for the size and the mass, everything else about this particular pulsar seems to be a bit of a mystery right now. Now, um, these are extremely important objects for us and also very interesting objects because of their very predictable pattern of um, pulsation, essentially. We've even thought about using pulsars as a very accurate clock. They're technically more accurate than atomic clocks. These are the most precise uh, pulsating devices you can find anywhere in the universe. And in the last few years, there has even been talk about how to possibly form a kind of a map of the galaxy using pulsars, because their precision and their very exact location means that we can navigate the galaxy and know exactly where we are if we discover these pulsars and can map their locations. And their pulsations are so accurate that we can then even find objects orbiting around them if we see a deviation from this pulsation. The theory behind this is that we can technically discover an asteroid in the orbit around a pulsar if we were to look at the pulsations of a typical neutron star and discover some discrepancies. As a matter of fact, the first ever exoplanets discovered were around this pulsar right here, and it has a name now, it's known as Lich. This system uh, has three unusual exoplanets, and this one right here is even to date the smallest exoplanet ever discovered. It's about the size of our own moon and has a relatively similar mass to it, but all three planets here do orbit around this unusual object in the middle of the star system, the object known as Lich the Pulsar. But unfortunately, when it comes to J0030, there is really no explanation for what we're seeing just yet, because we literally just discovered this. And one of the possible explanations is, of course, in regards to the star system itself. Maybe the star system possesses some kind of um, object in it that's causing all of the matter to fall onto only the southern part of the pulsar. The northern part, for some reason, doesn't get anything. Or maybe all of the pulsars are actually unusual and have strange unusual formations on the surface. For all we know, only time will tell, but we'll definitely need to follow up on other pulsars now and try to discover what exactly they look like compared to this pulsar that we just looked at. And even in our own solar system, we know that even Earth sometimes has unusual um, magnetosphere anomalies, as you would call them, where the magnetic field and the magnetic lines do um, act slightly differently. But most importantly, even here in the solar system, we have objects like Uranus that do have unusual magnetosphere based on their um, rotation or their spin axis around the solar system. So here the magnetic field doesn't actually behave in the same way it does on Earth and also has these unusual axes pointing in directions where we're having trouble explaining right now. So hopefully using these details from Uranus, we might be able to explain what's happening with this pulsar as well. 
But until we discover more, that's really it. It's a pretty crazy discovery, being able to see the surface of such a tiny object so far away at a distance of 1100 light years away from Earth, and also spinning more than 200 times per second, is somewhat mind-blowing. So once we discover more about this object, we'll follow this up with another video. Make sure to subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.